everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Play on GAA podcast. This is another episode of the Club Roundup, and this is a hurling edition. I have Luke here with me. And Luke, the result that jumps out straight away, St. Thomas has captured their sixth Galway Senior Hurling Championship crown in 10 years. 11 points for Captain Connor Cooney as they overcome Clarence Bridge by 20 points to 17. This was a very, very entertaining game. What did you make of it yourself? Yeah, it was a, it was an interesting one coming in. That Claren Bridge have been the kind of the, they've been talked up an awful lot in recent years. You look at underage results in Galway in hurling, and uh, they've been look they've been dominating underage. And look, I, a lot of the lads kind of that have been part of those teams are still very young. They'd be still early twenties. Some of them haven't even kind of come true. That there's talk that there's there is, some of the current underage teams at minor level and everything as well are absolutely fantastic for Claren Bridge. So it does seem like a matter of time before Claren Bridge are going to win a Galway Championship. St. Thomas, like there was talk that maybe they were getting a bit older and stuff as well, but it just shows that uh, for now anyway, that St. Thomas is still the team anyway up in Galway. They're still kind of wily enough as well. And to be honest, I think they probably kind of, they were very, very well deserving in this game. Clarence Bridge were probably way too reliant on Evan Nyland up front as well. They really struggled to get scores outside of freeze. So uh, yeah, I think St. Thomas kind of really dominated them. And uh, particularly, I think if you look defensively, I think Finton Burke gave it uh, a pretty uh, huge performance for them. And from fullback, he came out with some unbelievable ball. Payne Burke had a good game too. So it's a, it's a solid St. Thomas's team. And uh, for now anyway as well, I think that they just kind of still have that edge over Claren Bridge. Although, look, Claren Bridge will eventually win one up there. Yeah, I agree. Because the youth, obviously, the Claren Bridge haven't come true. Apart from the obvious one being Evan Island, they're stacked and they're eventually going to win one, in my opinion. But where do you think the key moments in the game were for St. Thomas as they kind of got them over the line? Yeah, look, it's an interesting one because I think throughout the entire game, I think they always had Clarence Bridge at maybe three or four points. And uh, it, there was never really, I thought, one absolutely huge moment that kind of swung for them. I think that they uh, just every time that they needed something kind of that they were being dragged back into a game. Connor Cooney would step up and he'd hit a score. Look, he hit five from play and some of these were absolutely huge. I think Aina Burke hit two in a row as well. That was kind of maybe a key moment was when he stepped up and hit and hit them two as well. But uh, I suppose maybe at the end as well, there were scenes kind of when it was still a three-point game, long ball played in from Claren Bridge with a free. And uh, Finton Burke anyway caught it inspirationally, kind of drove it from defense, and he was uh, he was fouled there as well. Maybe that was probably the key moment, and just kind of summed up the attitude of St. Thomas that they weren't going to be uh, they weren't going to be beaten on the day. And look, they kept Clarenbridge to seventeen points, which is a pretty fantastic kind of defensive play. The goal was never really under that much threat, and uh, yeah, look, they completely stopped them from uh, scoring from play. So from that perspective, that was probably huge for them uh, being able to get over the line in the end. Yeah, and the, the Galway Hurling Championship has kind of been going under the radar this winter. Obviously, everyone's been kind of focused on how good Bally Gunner look. Everyone's focusing on Patrick Swell being beaten by Kilmallock in that final, Lockmore Castellani doing the double. Everyone's looking at Bally Hale, Shamrocks, Kilmuckle Croaks completing the double in Dublin. And meanwhile, this Galway Championship has been, you know, trotting along and St. Thomas is, you know, winning the crown again. They're sixth, obviously, in 10 years. So they've established a bit of a dynasty over there. Do you give them any chance against the Bally Gunners, the Bally Hales? Do you see them as worthy contenders? Yeah, look, well, I think the problem for St. Thomas and this problem with the structure for them is that look, Dave, that was the that was also that was a Galway final and a Connacht final at the same time. So they've no more games in Connacht, and the next game that they'll face will be an All Ireland semi final. Probably look, it's going to be in at the end of January. So it's between now and uh, the end of January, they're done and they just have to kind of keep training away. So the, the problem that they have is they're going to have to go out there looking for challenge games. And they're going to have to try and stay fresh while the likes of you look kind of monster next weekend, play a semi-final and then they'll have another final the week before Christmas as well. Probably in the 19th, I think they play as well. So look, they're, they're going to be facing teams that are going to be far fresher than them. And yeah, I think, Maybe as well that it's not probably the same level of a St. Thomas team that we've seen in recent years as well. The players are a year older as well. And it's it's just 
I would be less confident probably back in St. Thomas's this year than I would have been in previous years. I think that they have a fantastic team, but you're just kind of looking at maybe like David Burke's getting a little bit older and stuff as well. Bernard Burke too in round midfield. And I just think that maybe when you're looking at the strength of other teams, like Bally Hale and Bally Gunner look to be and like absolute peak at their powers as well. And like that's it's it's very, very difficult to uh, to maybe look past them. Yeah, and you mentioned Bally Hale, Sean Mux there. They beat Mount Leinster Rangers by six points, 22 points to 16. Mount Leinster Rangers pushed them closer than I think a lot of people would have predicted. But what did you make of Bally Hale's performance? Yeah, look, I think this was this was really good for Bally Hale that they got a real game here. And that I think a lot of people feared at the after the first half when they were they were so kind of comfortable in the first half that they uh that it, it, they were just kind of kind of eased through, but it was it was a real kind of game of two halves too. Though there was a heavy heavy wins in it as well. Mount Leinster look they really kind of uh, they really uh, they really pushed Bally Hale. They got it back to four points, and then it was a great chance for goal that was saved by Dean Mason ultimately. That uh, yeah, I suppose that kind of from then on, Bally Hale went back up the other end. TJ hit a score. Joey Cuddy he hit a score as well, and I think Owen Cody hit a score too. They, with the last three points of the game. And they looked, they, they, they ran out kind of six point winners in the end. But uh, yeah, they, they really got a good old test there as well. So I think that's going to really stand to Bally Hill going forward. And yeah, going forward for them, like they've, they're set up now for the next day. They'll be playing St. Rhinos from Offaly as well. So that'll be another good test for them. A Rhinos team that have done really, really well in Offaly. So it's 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 set up really, really nicely. And you're just looking at the strength of that kind of Bally Hale squad as well. That's like the any team with a forward line contain TJ, Fenley, Cody, Adrian Mullen, like they're gonna take some stopping. And as well, this year, I think Joey Cuddy, he's been some story for them. His emergence that he's uh like the last day he hit three points and then against Mountain Leinster, then hitting four points from play too. He looks to be an absolute kind of superstar in the making too. So it's uh Everywhere you look, there's uh, there's just problems for teams. You manage to slow one of them down in the day, like the way Colin Fenley didn't score again, but then others step up. So it's uh, yeah, they're, it's so so hard to look past them right now. Yeah, I agree. And and interestingly enough, the game was deferred for a week as a result of TJ Reid's wedding. That was absolutely that's a mad stat to hear. I don't know how TJ managed to pull that off, but yeah, some man. Yep, yeah, I know, and I'm not fully sure on kind of uh, on how uh, on how that was uh, presented to Mount Leinster Rangers, and like I look, you'd assume that they would have had to have agreed to it as well, but it is kind of it is mad to think that uh, that it was agreed to. So it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one, all right. But uh, and look, if Mount Leinster did agree to defer it themselves, then fair play to them. But it's. Uh, yeah, it's a, it, it was it was a strange one when I heard that that was what was going to happen, though. But look, it works out perfectly for Bally Hale in the end. They have the full complement here. And uh, yeah, obviously, they didn't, uh, the, the wedding didn't seem to uh, cause any long term uh, problems for the lads, kind of. Uh, they look still as, as fit as ever. And yeah, look, there's, there's some outfit going forward into that Rhinos game now uh, on the 12th of December. Yeah, now TJ's a married man as a result of the game being postponed. So all is well and ends well. But uh, guys, that is the end of the Play On GA Podcast Club Roundup Hurling Edition. We hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to check our Ladies Football Roundup and our Gaelic Football Roundup. And until the next episode, guys, take care.